Hey guys, in this video I want to share with you all purpose builds, the ones that pretty much have helped me since early stages in Master Rank up to this point. But before that, just to share a bit of this channel schedule, I usually upload one video per week, and among that content some other games, generally RPG, so if you are interested in that, be sure to check the reviews playlist, and without further ado, I've shared this build a couple of times, and I have also shown that it is perfectly able to beat monsters like recent Balstrats without that much issue. It takes some time because of DPS, but it is really comfy, and once you wanna jump into Anomaly Research Quest, it holds up for a long time. The first one is the build without augmentations. Some may ask, do I really need that defense boost 7? In that early stage in the game, I would recommend at least 700 defense, if possible. If you reach that, then you can change that skill for some other things. And once you have the materials to augment armor pieces, these are the augmentations and changes I suggest. For the charm and defense, change whatever you feel. The next build is also really comfy, pretty much created to fight against whatever comes your way. And if you have issues against recent Shagaru, for example, this build makes everything a walk in the park. The main idea is that with at least Embolden 3 and Guard 3, while executing some guard dashes, the number of attacks that stop you are counted, and of course you avoid the obnoxious cheap damage late monsters deal. That is the list of decos. And of course keep in mind that if you want to improve its efficiency, learning instablock and the basic mechanics of a passive lance builds, You'll increase your damage output, and because of Embolden, you'll be able to jump through those attacks that you wouldn't be able to avoid in normal circumstances. In other words, this is a well-rounded build that also deals a good amount of damage. Now, for the following two builds, they are specialized in elemental weapons. The first one is rather simple. It has the conventional skills to exploit the elemental damage as much as possible. In these builds, just because of comfort, I use Embolden 3. Being able to avoid attacks through jumps in time to time helps a lot, as well as having guard 5. For the decos, that is the least of them, in this particular case, fire. In this build, keep in mind that with some weapons you won't be able to get a decent affinity, but you can change the optional decos for some extra expert J plus 4, and that is going to make things good enough. It is quite comfy, but I will only use it while learning how to fight some monsters. Once you grasp the basic mechanics, you can jump into the next build. This one is a bit harder to use just because of Bloodlust, but other than that, once you break a monster part, your damage and HP increase without that much issue. Patching hits affinity is no problem because Bloodlust adds a nice affinity bonus and pretty much every skill synergizes a lot here. The list of decos is the following. And while changing elements, there are small adjustments we need to do, but nothing extraordinary. Just add the right elemental decos plus those that also increase extra damage, like blessings, and try to keep your affinity at least in 15. That way, once Bloodlust kicks in, your affinity will be at 90. Other than that, this thing packs a good punch. In this case, be sure to also learn how to synergize your switch skills. For example, what I do is have in the red Spiral Thrust and in blue Anchor Rage. So the idea is to focus on the offensive, and once I need to switch scrolls because of sharpness, I try to effectively use Anchor Rage for the extra boost, deal some damage, and then change once again for the red scroll. That way, even if the weapon I am using has a small purple sharpness, I can keep the damage and sharpness up. I hope these builds are useful for all of you, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.